Hey, welcome back to my show called Changing Lanes. This is a series that I started to help people like you who are thinking about making the move from somewhere like California, Illinois, wherever, New Jersey, here to Tennessee. And what I'm doing is I'm interviewing people that have moved from California and we're just talking and having a discussion. And basically I'm asking them questions to learn about their move and seeing if we can give you some tips to help make that move smoother. So if you don't know me, my name is Matt Bogosian. I'm a real estate agent in the middle Tennessee area. I love doing this stuff on YouTube and helping people like you. So I'm going to go ahead and bring on my guest right now. Let me unmute her first. Hey, there she is. Hey, hi, Matt. <laughs> How are you? I, I'm doing well. I Hey, you know what? I, I love your title. Oh, thank you. Perfect. Guess how I found that name. How? The movie? No. Chat GPT. Oh, <laughs> Artificial what? intelligence. Are you serious? It's Ooh. cool. Like I just typed in, give me some ideas for names. And one of them came up was changing lanes. And I was like, that's a uh, great idea. Oh my gosh. You can do that? Oh. You don't, you don't even have to think. It's not even me that's sitting here. It's a computer generated. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> scare me. <laughs> well, so Nadine, tell us like a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up? Where did you live in California? And where are you now? Okay, so I am a native California born and raised in the Southern California area in um, an area called Redlands. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and and uh, it's a nice, quaint area, um, very family oriented. You know, the 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 streets are, um, you know, like country. It's, yep. it's a little, it's a little bit like country out there. In a I've actually been country. there. Uh, my sister lived there for a while, and okay. so I've been to Redlands. Which okay, is cool. okay. So you've been there. Yep. Okay, so you know. Yep. Yep. And so you grew up. Did you grow up in Redlands? I grew up in a place called San Bernardino, but it wasn't so, you know, like the worst crime in the world at that time. So <laughs> that's right. It is. That's like the crime capital of the world. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't of <laughs> the world. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's, it was nice back then. It was kind of like Redlands back then. But uh, we changed. We we moved as a child. I moved from there to Grand Terrace, which was a little, you know, little nicer, a lot nicer place. And um, and but I just stayed in the area when I got married. And I got the kids. I just stayed in the area because I loved it. It was home. Yeah. So you ended up in East Tennessee, right? Yes, sir. OK. So what town did you move to? So I, I lived in, I moved to a town called Dayton. Oh yeah. Dayton's like right outside of Chattanooga kind of. Mm -hmm. town in yes. That corner. yes. So what was like the tipping point? I mean, you, I, I've asked clients that have moved here, like you that lived in California your whole life. Yeah. It's like the most beautiful state, arguably. Right. What True. caused you to move to Tennessee? <sighs> Well, that's kind of like, um, <laughs> that's a story, but um, it, it's a long time in the making. I, I love to travel. I, you know, I'm a road tripper. I, I love to get in the car and see where the car wants to take me kind of person. Mm -hmm. And so um, whenever I'm feeling a little, a little, um, a little angst, a little frustrated, you know, I need to go on a road trip. So that's my deal. Nadine goes on road trips. But I'd never been on a road trip over in, in Tennessee. But let me back up. Going on road trips, you see things outside of California. You see the way the other parts live. And, and you meet people that are, that are different than Californians. You know, I mean, I'm not going to say Californians are rude. Because they're they're not. I, I lived in an area where you know everybody is friendly and everybody's sweet and kind. Um, but but when you go outside of the state, uh, 
there's just a different feel, a different take. I'm not quite sure how to describe it. It's just like that. So I thought about going to Idaho. And I have had a friend that lives in Idaho. And I went out there on a road trip to, you know, check out the area. And, <laughs> and I parked in her driveway. And, and I, I was visiting and I went, oh, shoot, should I, should I back up the rent a car so that they don't see my tags? And she says, well, no, that's okay. You're just here for a little while. I said, I was kidding. Are you really? <laughs> She's like, yeah, they're a little, they don't really. So <laughs> that was like, oh, okay, that's a sign. Yeah. No yeah. to Idaho. No to Idaho. So, yeah. so they're not very welcoming to you, at they, least not right there. No, they have, um, what did I see? I saw a, I saw a, uh, not a bumper sticker, but it was a license plate that said, go back to CA. G-O-B-K to CA. I'm like, wow. You're like, okay. No, not, not my place. So um, this started about seven or eight years ago when I, when I was thinking about moving. And Tennessee just came out. I don't know. I can only attribute it to a spiritual prodding. Yeah. Tennessee. And I had never been to Tennessee. I have two friends that live here, but I have yet to see them when I'm, when I'm here. But um, it, they had nothing to do with that. That was like a, a discovering that they were here. Yeah. Um, after my idea. So, so that's kind of like the way it started. Okay. When did you move here to Tennessee? What year? Last year. Oh, wow. So, so most people that I've talked to have said that like, and I, and I think this could be for various reasons, not just political too. I want to say that up front because sometimes I feel like everything can go political and, but like a lot of people during the pandemic said, Hey, that was like a turning point. Mm -hmm that kind of said, I'm making the move. Mm -hmm. Was that the same for you? Well, yes and no. Um, because, uh, yes, definitely the, the pandemic, everything shutting down before that it was more about, well, how am I going to leave my business and start my business over here. That's not going to, you know, that's not going to work. So when the pandemic hit and everything started going viral or not viral, a virtual oh, that's... that helped. Uh, okay. So, and the, and the political leaning also with the constraints that helped. Uh, but the one thing that was hard for me to do was to sell my home that I had been living in for 20 years. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. That, you just that. you'd have everything set up how you want it, all your yard, probably your flowers, everything. You are absolutely right. So what happened was the year of the pandemic, no, the year before, I started um, I started re re renovating my house. Sorry. Okay. I started re renovating my house. And by the end of it, it was uh 2000 okay so it was 19 i started and at the end of 19 and then in 2000 so that was that was a big deal when i stopped when the renovation was over i sat back in my house and i went everything's perfect the way i like it <laughs> i've always wanted it this way and now I'm going to leave. So I sat there for probably about two months and I thought, oh, I kept on thinking about Tennessee. Well, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And I hear this inner voice inside me say, um, well, what are you waiting for? And so I didn't really have an answer to that. What, what am I waiting for? It's not like I was waiting for my life to begin. Yeah. And so when I, that was my answer. I called up my realtor the next day, my realtor friend the next day. And I said, I'm ready. Let's put it up. And so that, 
that was the pinpoint moment where I was really asking myself, no, not lofty ideas. I didn't have lofty ideas. And it's going to be this and it's going to be great. I, I just felt like this was a, a turning point in my life where it's either now or never kind of thing. And I needed to, I needed to just answer that call. And That's so really that, interesting. And I want to back up here, first of all, because I feel like your perspective is really good because of what you do uh, uh, for a living. Mm. So just tell everyone quick what you do and about your business. Cause I thought that was interesting how the pandemic caused you to kind of go a little more virtual. It yes. sounds like. Yes. And then you're like sitting there going, wait a second, mm -hmm. this isn't so bad. I can do this virtual business. Right. And now you're doing it from Dayton, Tennessee. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do? What's the name of your business? Okay, so my name of my business is Steel Recovery, and I am a uh, addiction counselor. Okay. And I've been addiction counselor for almost 30 years. So I had my own private practice for about two years um, before I left California. <clears throat> so I've been, I've been in the private sector. Um, and actually, no, it was a government sector um, uh, working for the county. And so when I, when I retired there, I went into private practice. Wow. And so I had got a brick and mortar and, you know, I had clients coming in there and I, and I, I go, of course I wanted to still move out of California, but I felt like that is something I, well, now I'm not going to be able to do that for a while. I have to stay. I always wanted virtual coaching and counseling, but nobody was really, you know, getting the hang of that. They didn't, yeah. they, they want to see you face to face. When the pandemic hit, obviously everyone went virtual and, and uh, I had to close down my, my office because nobody was coming, you know, at that time. Yeah. Was yeah. Scared and nobody was going anywhere, much less sitting in an office with somebody. So so I had to close down my office and that was the jumping point to virtual, virtual counseling, virtual life coaching. See, that's amazing. And I like too. so then moving back to what you were saying about your light, like moving to Tennessee, you and I talked briefly before, like it is like, I think about a lot of, I know there's so many people right now in California that are like, waiting for some kind of like perfect moment to move where like there's not going to be any uncertainty and there's not going to be any trouble making the move. And like, that's never, that never exists. No. How would that, you'd have to like win the lottery, right? Like some crazy things. So like you have no kids like have to be out of school perfectly. Your home sells, you get here in front. It's just, is too right. So eventually you just have to say, what are you waiting for? Right? Like just, yeah. Because what it's sad. Are you waiting for. Yeah. Like I, I think of that, like, um, this is like a crazy extreme example, but I just feel like I just want to say it. Like I recently went under contract to buy a Airbnb beach house in Florida. Yeah. Okay. I'm scared. I'm nervous. There's all sorts of uncertainty, mm -hmm. but like, I see a lot of people my parents' age and they're like, I wish I always had a beach house. I wish I did this or that. And I'm like, if I don't do it right now, if I don't jump on it, I'm not going to be able to afford it when I'm older and there's going to be reasons why I can't get it. Right. So I just ripped the Band-Aid off and did it. That's so cool. Good for you. <laughs> and I'm not, look, I might on the outside be like, yeah, beach house. But on the inside, I'm nervous and scared. And I know that that's how people probably are like you that moved here. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I mean, you do it afraid, right? You you just go and 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 what do you what do you have to lose? These are these are all internal questions that you need to um you need to address. You can't just you can't flippantly make this this um this move that's going to change your whole life um on a whim. It's like uh, we have a we have a um, 
a phrase in recovery called um, geographics. So in with with it um, with addicts or alcoholics, they, they you know I know what the problem is. They just move, you know. So they just move from place to place to place, you know. Yep. But everywhere you go, there you are. So looking at you know why asking yourself the why why do you want to do this why do you want to move what is your what is your reasons for this you have to answer your why yeah and then then you can figure out exactly what your what your next approach is did you how did you land in Dayton like how did you figure out where you want to be that's a good question so Okay, so I knew Tennessee. So I wasn't getting Alabama, Mississippi, Massachusetts. I wasn't getting any, I mean, Idaho is no, no Idaho. So, but I just kept getting Tennessee. Okay. It was like spiritually getting Tennessee. So, okay, so it, it's Tennessee. Where in Tennessee? So, like the flag, broken up into three areas, right? Yep. So the big thing, here's a big thing for, for Californians. The humidity, which is like, we freak out about the humidity. We yeah. can take the heat. We yeah. got 118. It's a hot one, but we're okay. We're yeah. not melting. But it's the, it, you know, when you guys say, oh, it's like, it's like 98. We're like, what's 98? Until you know, last week, last summer was my first summer here. Woo. Oh, it was hot. I too. get it. I get it. But I, <laughs> Just, you know, I didn't want the, the humidity. That yep. was really my only deterrent. That's just for me. That was my only deterrent. And so when I wrap my head around anywhere I go, anywhere in the whole 49 states is not going to be like California, period. Right. I, I, I live in the arguably the most beautiful, the most perfect weather wise state in the union. So it's everywhere else is going to be different. It's either too cold or too hot in, in Arizona, or it's going to be humidity. So I'd rather go humidity than all the other two extremes. So, so that was one of the things that I had to change. Yeah. Yeah. That mind. is a tough one. I mean, I moved from Massachusetts in 1996 and I'll never forget. I went to UT in Knoxville going to my first math class and dripping wet and the pencil was smudging on the paper and everyone else was in like long sleeve button up shirts and pants. <laughs> and I was like, how am I going to live here? But I, my body's acclimated to it and I'm fine now. I know, right? It's so weird. It's so weird. Okay. So your question was, how'd you get what, to Dayton? Okay. I'm so sorry. I digressed. So, I, you know, what really helped me was the Facebook pages. Yeah. Um, moving from California to Tennessee. Oh my gosh, those people were amazing. I can't say enough wonderful things about them because they were really a guidepost for me. So when I when I was looking at the three different areas, Western Tennessee seemed a little more hot and humid. Yeah. Middle Tennessee seemed a little more tornado-ish and still hot and humid and not uh, uh, flat plains. Yep. And I didn't like flat plains. So Eastern Tennessee seemed a little more cool. And so I just looked and, and it had a lot of mountain areas. Yeah. So I looked at that, that I'm like, okay, that's the area, the region, you know, going in the, the DAP. Yeah. I don't know. I always try to do that. My kids are awesome at it. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so all the way from Chattanooga all the way to the DAP, yep. that's what I was going to do. I'm going to I'm going to do um, – I'm going to look in that area. So I mean, I love – down by Dayton, I, I do a lot of like – I do – I say I do a lot. I used to and I want to do more again of like mountain biking mm -hmm. and – I also have a dirt bike and like to do trails and I like hiking and Chattanooga is like unbelievable for that. I just say I'm, I'm lumping Dayton into Chattanooga just cause it's in that yeah, that's okay. area. 
so much hiking and like kayaking and rock climbing. Oh my gosh. It's breathtaking, especially now that it's spring. It just takes my breath away looking at all this, this green. I mean, yeah. I, my favorite color is green. I'm living in my favorite color and it's everywhere. Just splashed everywhere. It's just everywhere. So what about your move? Did you use movers or did you, how did you get your stuff to Tennessee? Pods. Uh, okay. I, I call pods. And it worked good? Yes, it worked. It worked well. Um, one of the things that, that, <clears throat> that messed me up was when I was, well, first of all, it was, the monthly was pretty expensive. It was about two fifty at that time last year. So monthly uh, meaning like to store your a stuff? A month, yes. Okay. To store it. So I was thinking, oh, why don't I just store it here? So, mm -hmm. so it was like $80 to store my big pods. So I thought, well, let me just get a price <clears throat> on how much that would be. What is the price now? So I called and the person that answered asked me a date. And I said, I'm not looking for a date. Well, we can't go any further unless you give me a date. I said, well, let's just put this date. Well, unbeknownst to me, they called me that date and said, "Our your pot is on the way, but we can't we can't um, fulfill it until you give us a call." I'm like, "What?" So, <laughs> like, I'm moving. <laughs> not yet. I didn't even have a house. So that changed everything. That changed, um, and every time I I called, it was like. It was it was a disaster. So eventually, because they were every time I called to make sure that you know nobody was they that they erased it. Um, they put they put my um, my my request in the queue. So I kept on bumping it down. Whatever. Anyway, it was a mess. My 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 advice is. Do not call them until you are absolutely ready on the date. That's it. Everything else went okay. That's like anything these days. You can't just call and have like a, com a conversation and set something up like normal and have it just like work. Right. Like that's funny because we just had to order furniture for that Airbnb and like there's all sorts of dates they said they'll wait. I don't know what they're going to do. That furniture might be down there right now. <laughs> it's on the curb. Somebody come pick it up. I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, you can't just click a button and yeah. say, hey, can you deliver at this date? Like, yes, yes. So that's yes. good to know. So wait until you're ready so you can give them a firm date. Don't firm try to date. call. Yes. And of course, that what's wonderful is you can speak to a live human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is nice. It and is then did nice. you use movers when you got to Dayton or did you unload everything yourself? I, I unloaded myself, my granddaughter and her friend. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> you said, yeah. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah, I, I moved it into, into a, a storage unit. And then the next month I bought my house. So I had oh, to that's the worst. Uh, I know. I always tell clients, like, don't ask me to help move. Like, I'll give you $500, but I'm not moving <laughs> people. Don't say that, Matt. <laughs> I know. Like, okay, hey. I, I don't want to ask you to move, but can you give me $500? No, no, don't say that. So wait, so who went with you on this move? What's your family like? I'm just curious. Like, uh, so, so I went by myself. It's, okay. It's just me. Okay. And my whole family, my my uh, daughter and her family are were in California. My mother, my sister, and her family. So um, fast forward to now, my daughter came here. Okay. Um, they have to wait until their son gets out of school, and so him and her husband are coming here. Um, my mother, I bought the house, and with knowing that my mother wanted to come see they came after i bought the house my sister and my mother and my and my daughter came for the first time for them too to come to tennessee to see if they even wanted to live here and oh, they fell in love awesome. yeah so wait you're out there are you single and ready to mingle 
Do we need to try to find you? Know, ready to mingle like that? <laughs> I think that that was a long time ago. But yes, I am single. All right, gentlemen in, in Dayton, you can meet her at the Walmart on <laughs> Friday at one o'clock. There'll be a line. She will interview you. You're funny. <laughs> How'd you know there was a Walmart here? <laughs> <laughs> she prefers that you be over six feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> no overalls okay yeah no overalls <laughs> i know you could find some that's one thing i've noticed some people don't know about when they come to tennessee from like california i'll have i guess they'll say to me i want to live in like a small nice affordable town that's close to stuff and i'm like well what do you mean so like <laughs> When you go to these affordable towns outside of Nashville, and I say affordable, so say you're looking for a house for 300000 they can be very country. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not going to have a Target right next to you and a steakhouse and sushi. Like, right. Right. you're in a little country town. There's like a Dollar General store. Right. right. And the people are kind of country, I'll just say. Like, sure. it's... And to some people, that's what they want. Mm -hmm. And for some people, I feel like they're looking for like Orange, a mini version of Orange County in a little right. town in Tennessee. And you're just not going to get that. Well, you're going to get that in Salty Daisy. You could do that in Salty Daisy. Yeah, there you go. Or Chattanooga. But yeah. I, I love... I, I'm country myself. I, I've lived in the city all my life. Well, city, kind of city-ish. Um, yeah. But... But I, did, I thought I was country until I came to the country. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm not country. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so not fine. country. It, it's fine. But just people need to know, hey, like, it can be kind of country. But if you want to be, like, somewhere where it's quiet and there's not a lot of people and it's considered, I guess, safe, then that's, you know, yeah. what you can do. Right, right. Um, yeah, I, I love the area. Do you have any regrets? Do you have any regrets? None. No. You know, um, when I made my decision, it was a turning point. It was exactly what it needed to be. It was a turning point. And just for me, what, what I felt led spiritually um, by God to, you know, let go of anything that I was holding on to. Yeah. And that was from things to people that weren't, you know, that weren't a part of my life, resentments, um, anything that was holding me back from growing. I, I didn't, I just did all of that. <clears throat> so there was a process of about two months after I left my, after I, I moved out of my home to when I got on the road. And that was, you know, with me, you know, packing everything and discarding things that I didn't need anymore and, and only taking things that I needed and that I wanted. And, you know, that's a process of going through the kids' stuff, going through your old stuff, and you know, the photo album. And, you know, all of those memories are stirring up. I, I don't mean to go deep on you, but it, 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 this is a deep situation where you just got to, you got to, purge i felt yeah. i needed to purge everything and and um you know am i holding on to this problem am i holding on to this old resentment um this old anger or whatever and 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 i just had the process of letting everything go going to somebody and saying you know gosh i'm so sorry for what i did i i'm so sorry for what happened in my part and and that was just so freeing. So I needed to leave California with nothing, um, put everything put in place the way I I needed it left, and and it was done. And actually, I went back the the following Christmas, and I actually even drove by my my street. Uh, I was passing it by. I wasn't, it wasn't um, something that I planned on doing. I was passing it by and I went, oh, and that was it. I had yeah. no pings, nothing. Yeah. That's I, wasn't, I wasn't sad about being back in, in California. I wanted to go back to Tennessee. Wow. That's funny because I left 
Massachusetts for college mm -hmm. and kind of just mm -hmm. never went back. Like I visited my parents, of course. And then when I was like in college, my parents ended up selling the house and moving. And like, I never got to have the closure. Like it sounds like you had. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's times I think about my childhood home and I kind of feel sad. Like, Mm. I haven't been back there and I'm kind of like a little sad about, but I don't want to move there. So it's kind of a weird feeling. So when you just said that, that kind of triggered that. I was like, interesting. So, so, so you haven't been back at all. I haven't been back. I don't, it's been so long since I've been back and I don't even know why. Like oh. it. Yeah. And that kind of like is hanging behind my, me, like, like, I haven't mm -hmm. seen some family members in a long time. Not for any reason. I love them. I just. Mm -hmm. So anyways, that's something to think about. Like for people moving, I think like that closure, um, mm -hmm. whatever that means, taking pictures of the old house, saying bye, doing your, I didn't like do any of that. And it sounds, I liked how you said, look, I put everything in place. Mm -hmm. I can I do that. Do you still remember the moment when you pulled out in your car heading for Tennessee? Yes. Yeah. Yes. you crazy. When you got on the road. Oh, yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> My sister and I actually, actually, um, she went with me because mm -hmm. she wanted to see, right? But we did this long road trip. I think it lasted us uh, three weeks, our road trip back, because we went to Idaho again to see my friend. And then we shot out and we were going to do a lot of sightseeing. So we had a fantastic trip and it was, it was a blast. So when we left, she had, <laughs> she had, um, she had compiled all this music to our travel. So good. That's awesome. We, what, what did we, what, it was all a surprise, right? So she was in charge of the music. So when we hit the road, when we hit the freeway, the 15, what do you think she did? What song was it that was playing? Hit the road, Jack. Nice. Charles. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. I know. I love it. It's perfect. That's uh, the music on road trips is just so awesome. Putting on like old, like I, I used to listen to stuff like um, John Mellencamp was mm -hmm. one of my favorite yeah. Um stuff like that in like uh what's his name brian adams you know bon jovi yes put that I stuff on and just hit the road the all their albums yeah <laughs> you can do all their albums so you took three weeks and we can wrap up here in a minute i try to keep these to around 30 minutes but you took about three weeks to get here then with all your stops because mm -hmm. i've had several people say i've had several people say hey they just like tried to get here and like as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. And then several others said, look, just plan on making it like this cool, memorable trip mm -hmm. and take your time. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, where did, where are some places you stopped? Like, did you stop at like any national parks or like cool hotels or anything? Well, actually we tried to do um, Yellowstone and, and Mount Rushmore, but it was so cold at that time. It was the end of of October, and they were it, they were just it, they were on a freeze out. So yeah. we couldn't we couldn't do that, and so we had to go other places. I can't tell you because yeah. we got lost. You got what? lost, but still, you were with your sister too. Like I feel like to be with your sister yeah. and have that bonding experience at this stage in your life is just neat too. Fantastic. Fantastic. I would never do it any other way. It was so much fun. And the other thing, cool thing about it was with my, with my business, I was able to, if you got Wi-Fi, if I had a client that day, I just had to make sure I was at a hotel. Oh yeah. And, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. Well, let's wrap this up. Okay. I appreciate it. How can people, I'll, I'm going to post this in the group on Facebook and I'm oh. also going to post it on my YouTube channel. Okay. How can people, and I'll put it in the description, but how can they find you if someone wants to maybe book a call with you to talk about an addiction or a problem they're having in life or whatever? Sure. Um, www 
steelrecovery.com and that's steel s t e e l e okay recovery.com and okay. my phone number it, my business number is 909-219-2589 okay cool well, thank you. I really feel like this was a great meeting. I've enjoyed meeting with you. Oh, good. And I, I've enjoyed it too. Chatting. So if I'll, uh, I'll set up that uh, interview for all the guys at Walmart down there in Dayton for you. Well, thank you. Just be there at 1 p.m. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Wear a tuxedo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day. It's yeah, been great. Thanks, Matt. This was you. really great. Um, I, I really enjoyed talking with you. And good luck on your Airbnb and all mm -hmm. your endeavors in this channel. It's really helpful. I'm, I'm glad that you did it because there's so many people who are leaving, obviously, but they don't know. They, they, we're, they're just in the same boat as us. And, you know, we, we have to have a little bit of guidance. So, yeah. I think it's I think it's good to hear from someone like you too and see how happy you are now and yeah very and happy. it can be done so it can be yes all right thanks all Matt. Right. thank you uh-huh bye-bye uh -huh.